welcome to You Brew Kombucha. Today I'm gonna go over why I'm so against using vinegar in kombucha brewing. So I've gotten a lot of really good questions from home brewers who are curious about why I really am so against using vinegar in any part of the home brewing process. So I wanna set a little bit of context and some background around what the arguments are from people who do advocate for using vinegar in the kombucha brewing process. So since vinegar is a type of ferment, it requires a level of um, acidity in order to get that fermentation going. So a lot of um, brewers will recommend adding a little bit of distilled white vinegar to their brews to drop the pH to a safe enough level to inhibit mold growth and to get the fermentation process started. A lot of those sites also advocate for using vinegar as a substitute for kombucha starter tea. And I think that's really where the big problem lies. In those sites that recommend that distilled white vinegar is an adequate or equal or even better substitute for kombucha starter tea. So for me, that's an issue because distilled white vinegar is not the same as starter tea. And it actually puts your brew at risk for a whole host of other potentially problematic issues that might come up. So in a lot of my other videos, I emphasize that using vinegar in your kombucha brewing process is completely unnecessary, and it actually puts your brews at risk for over acidification and imbalances in the yeast bacteria symbiosis. A lot of people um, have rightfully called me out by saying that kombucha actually is a vinegar. So if left to its own devices, a batch of kombucha, if left sitting alone at room temperature, will eventually ferment and become so acidic that it becomes kombucha vinegar. Um, but one thing that people aren't really considering is that Kombucha is just one of many types of vinegar ferments, and not all vinegars are the same, made up of the same compounds, or can be used interchangeably. As I'm sure you know, red wine vinegar is not the same as balsamic vinegar, is not the same as apple cider vinegar, and it's definitely not the same as kombucha vinegar. So using um, other types of vinegars is not really gonna give you the same outcome as using kombucha vinegar, also known as starter tea. So if you're using a different type of vinegar to acidify your brew, it will bring the pH down to a low enough level that will prevent mold from growing, which is a good thing, but you are also introducing a whole other set of acetic acids and molecules that may not be fully digestible by the kombucha SCOBY. If you're using apple cider vinegar, I really don't recommend using it, especially if it's raw, unfiltered apple cider vinegar, because all you have to do is look up a picture of vinegar eels and you'll find out why I don't recommend it. Other home brewers recommend using distilled white vinegar because it's the purest type of vinegar and it's basically just acetic acid. That is the purest type of vinegar and if given the choice of other vinegars to add to your kombucha, it's probably the best choice, but I still think that it's unnecessary because distilled white vinegar usually comes at a pH of around 2.4 to 2.5. And what I like to do to acidify my brews is to create a stockpile of very, very strong acidic starter tea from my SCOBY hotels and use that instead. So when I let my SCOBY hotels just hang out and ferment and get super, super acidic and turn into kombucha vinegar, the pH of my starter tea is right around 2.5. So it's not really necessary for me to bring in a different type of vinegar when I've already created a pure kombucha vinegar that will feed my cultures way better than any distilled white vinegar could ever do. I've also heard from a lot of home brewers who say that adding vinegar to their brew makes their kombucha ferment way too quickly, acidify too fast, or um, it gives their brews a very acrid, astringent taste. And it's because even though it's not gonna hurt the culture and it's not gonna um, hurt you who's consuming it, it's not gonna give you any ill adverse health effects, it does introduce probably way more acetic acids and a set of different acetic acids than what's in the kombucha vinegar to begin with. So you're gonna add something that isn't gonna harm your SCOBY, but it's not really gonna make it taste very good. So if you add distilled white vinegar to your brew, yes, it'll bring the pH down. Yes, it'll, um, it'll avoid mold growth, but if you're already doing that with good strong starter tea and you can get kombucha that ends up tasting way better than kombucha made with distilled white vinegar, for me, the choice is obvious. I'd rather make a pure kombucha batch using pure kombucha vinegar than add in a whole set of other acetic acids that may cause a yeast um, and bacteria imbalance in my kombucha brew. 
What's unique and what's a good thing about using starter tea or kombucha vinegar that comes from your own batches in your own SCOBY hotels is that it's already inoculated with the good yeast and bacteria that you need in order for your brew to ferment. Distilled white vinegar doesn't have any of that. So even though it does lower the pH and it is acidifying the brew, you do put yourself at risk for running an imbalance between the good yeast and bacteria that you need in order to keep your culture healthy and flourishing. Everybody can find an example to prove their point. Um, and there are a lot of home brewers out there who have commented and say that they use, com they use vinegar consistently in their brews and they really like the way their kombucha turns out. So to that, I'll say that Cultures are all different and are affected by a variety of different variables. So if you happen to have a kombucha scoby that is used to processing vinegar and you like the way it tastes and it's producing consistent carbonation, then by all means, keep doing what you're doing. That's completely fine. But my goal with You Brew Kombucha is to provide the most foolproof tips and tricks to create pure kombucha without the need of adding ingredients other than what is usually needed to brew a batch of kombucha. And that's just tea, water, sugar, and whatever fruit or herb flavorings that you wanna add during the second fermentation process. So if I don't find it necessary, and I might actually find it detrimental to add another ingredient into the mix, I can't in good conscience recommend it to my viewers. I've heard from way too many um, home brewers who talk about over acidic kombucha, kombucha that tastes really bad, just as a result of them using vinegar for me to be able to recommend that to anybody. Unless the situation is so dire and you can't find any starter tea to use to get your batch to acidify properly. Now, if you do find yourself in a situation where you don't have any starter tea and you really don't have any other choice but to use vinegar in order to acidify your brew, then by all means, please go ahead and use distilled white vinegar to drop that pH below four and make sure that your brew is acidifying properly and you're not putting it at risk for mold. But once you have a successful batch brewed and once you have your first fermentation completed and successful, I don't think there's any reason to continue to use vinegar after the fact. Just go ahead and use the acidic starter tea from that first batch of kombucha to continue to acidify your batches moving forward. So be sure to check out my video on SCOBY Care and SCOBY Hotels if you want more information on how I use my SCOBY Hotels to create super acidic kombucha starter tea, also known as kombucha vinegar, that I use to acidify my brews. And you can also check out my videos on pH and mold for other information on this topic. You can always find more details and more resources at ubrewkombucha.com. I hope this was helpful. Happy brewing.